Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Seraph Midrange. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing well. I am going to be out of town during this time, so I'm trying to pre-record and get a couple videos ahead so we can ensure we've got videos for you guys. If not though, I know John does have some plans to potentially live stream even over the weekend. So I hope you guys take the time to check that out. Uh, we also tried some different stuff this past week, including a little Magic the Gathering quiz. Uh, as of right now, that video is going up in 45 minutes. So. Hopefully it goes well, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, as far as today's deck goes, this is a Seraph mid-range deck that I have put together really to reminisce a little bit because Seraph is one of my favorite Kaldheim cards. Um, that being said, I don't think this deck is good. I've tested it once uh, and I built it myself and I'm very interested to see if we can actually get it to work. But the idea is pretty straightforward. <clears throat> We've got a lot of ways to kill creatures, obviously, because the or just permanents in general, I should say. But the idea is obviously we want to remove as many permanents as possible from the opponent's side of the field. And as we do that, Seraph is going to be able to gather and garnish up some counters, which we can then use to keep control of the board throughout the, the length of the game. Uh, so if we need to, we can remove those counters, basically sweep the board uh, for each non-land permanent on the field, which is kind of big. Uh, now, uh, to help us kind of get there, of course, we do have a couple of interesting things. So, of course, the Shambling Ghast plus Eye Twitch. I'm going for a 3 and 4 split here because I'd actually like to have those treasure tokens. Uh, but also, those minus 1, minus 1s are actually at a premium in a deck where we want to remove things. Uh, and so, I, I do kind of lean that way with uh, the full 4 Deadly Dispute. If we need to, we can obviously shoot those off. Uh, we do have 2 Blood Chiefs Thirst as well. Uh, three Meat Hook Maskers to be able to sweep, and then two uh, Culling Rituals in case we find ourselves against like a Enchantments list, Naya Runes list, something along those lines. Uh, this also just really helps ramp us, which is of course great. Uh, some, some cards I'm questioning as we're going through this because I do kind of want to test some things out here. So again, you'll see some oddities with this deck, uh, but I just wanted to try this out. Werewolf Pack Leader is a full four. Now that's a lot. It's also a commanding mana cost when we also have a Meat Hook Massacre, things like that in the early turns of the game. But this does allow card draw for the deck. And <clears throat> it's actually pretty easy to get to the uh, pack tactics, especially between Seraph and Werewolf Pack Leader and Orin Reef Ooze, uh, which can start to throw some counters around as well. Uh, this also helps buff up the Seraph so we can do a bigger sweep if we need to, uh, and ideally we can win off of that. Uh, we do have two Balaged Recovery. This just allows us to bring stuff back. Uh, and so if we find ourselves in a position where we need a sweeper that we may have played earlier, we can go ahead and pull it back or just get a, a backup Seraph, a backup pack leader if we need the car draw, whatever we need. Uh, now, I do have Go Blank in here as a two of. I actually just talked about this. I was responding to a comment, somebody mentioning that the... Um, the unlicensed hearse is a really great card in in the meta right now and you're exactly correct it's a hugely powerful card i prefer in a deck like this uh to solely be able to like sweep the board or, or sweep the graveyard in one shot i also love the discard uh because it kind of gets the opponent down to one thing per turn and ideally after we sweep and get the seraph down if they're only playing one card per turn we should be able to deal with that uh, and so that's kind of where I'm at with the go blank. Again, we're testing things out here today, guys. Uh, Binding of the Old Gods is a very obvious choice for the deck. It hits any non-land permanent, so it's very flexible. It gives us some lands and gives death touch to our creatures, which again, we can kind of kind of work with the Shambling Gas, Eye Twitches, all these early uh, kind of creatures to give them death touch and get in there for some damage. And then, like I said, Culling Ritual is in here as well. But that's the whole deck. It's pretty straightforward. We do have a Besiju as well as the Abandoned Mire and Hive of the Eye Tyrant uh, in the land slot just to be able to give us, again, a little bit of an exile spell, but also the Besiju actually gives us a way to kill something on the field as well. So very helpful there. Uh, all that to say, I'm really intrigued to see how this goes. I don't know that it'll be good. We're going to learn today uh, together, hopefully, and have some fun. I, I Personally, Seraph is one of my favorite cards from Kaldheim, like I said, and so truthfully, I just built this deck to really enjoy Seraph. If it doesn't work, I don't really care. So sorry if you wanted a really good video today, but uh, this might just be a flop. I don't care. I'm still going to have some fun with it. So let's jump right into game one. 
All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. I actually quite like this hand. While the pack leader is not necessarily playable off the face of it, that culling ritual is very tempting to keep. We also, of course, just have Neat Hook Massacre and the Seraph available, so I'm actually pretty happy with this. Hopefully we can get, uh, get some action with this one. Uh, I really do like having Culling Ritual. I think it's quite a good card in a number of different scenarios. Uh, and so I'm curious to see if we can actually pull this one off this uh, this game. Obviously, they do, I'm sure, run Deadly Dispute. Um, there's no doubt about that. Uh, I'm actually going to show them the Werewolf Pack Leader. We can't play it anyway, so I'm actually pretty happy to uh, let them take that. And then from here, we just have plenty of other options. So I'm not actually all that worried about it. Uh, let's go ahead and play the Seraph. Seraph into Culling Ritual is very good uh, for very obvious reasons. It doesn't hit the Seraph uh, because it's two or less, and uh, we can just kind of push for a really, really nice play here. I bet you they take Culling Ritual. <laughs> uh, that would be the obvious play. Um, Deadly Dispute's also good. Meat Hook is also good, though. So truthfully, they don't have a great option to take here. Uh, it could be any number of things. So we will see. Uh, I think Culling Ritual is probably the best, but we also can't play it yet, so there's some considerations there. They do take the Meat Hook. Interesting. So I really hope we just draw a land and an Acquisitions Expert. Uh, okay. I'm just going to give him the Deadly Dispute. That's fine. Uh, while I don't love that, obviously, it's not the end of the world. And there's the cult or the... Uh, <laughs> All right, so this is actually pretty awesome um, because we actually get to just do this. Uh, this obviously throws some counters here. They are going to get a treasure token out of the deal, but I don't particularly care. And then here we go with the Orin Refuse, which is also very good. So let's go ahead and throw a counter there uh, and get in for seven. That was a great sequence. Uh, I'm fairly certain they'll be able to deal with Seraph. This is obviously a mono black list, so I, I have to imagine they've got a way to deal with it. But uh, we were able to get a nice little three for one there and play the Orin Refuse off of it. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, I do really like Seraph, guys. It's such a cool card. Um, thank you for that counter. Uh, do we want to do this just to kill the... I mean, it's certainly an option. Um, but I think we decline, truthfully. Oh, interesting. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to go ahead and swing in. It's a pretty heavy hitter, uh, and I'm I'm interested to see. I'm sure they have a way to kill this, but uh, this is a bit of a risky play because if they do kill the Seraph, obviously they can then progressively kill more stuff because they take it with the Turgrid. So we're kind of banking on a lot here, but uh, that Seraph is doing some work for us. So fingers crossed. Uh, definitely fingers crossed. <laughs> Uh, that was a, <clears throat> excuse me, a really good showcase of the sequencing for the first few turns, though. We were really able to show off what we were trying to do, uh, and so I'm actually pretty happy with that. Even if we lose this game, that was a great sequence. I'm, I'm stoked. That was exactly what we wanted. Uh, opponent is really thinking about their two cards, which makes me, uh, think maybe they don't have a great play, uh, which is fine by me. They're gonna meat hook for three. Okay, so they get to steal the ooze because of this, if I'm not mistaken. Which we can't do anything about. Um, that's that's fine. Uh, but this does mean they're going to just have to... Do they not steal it? I'm sorry. Oh, it's if we sacrifice it, of course. Of course, of course. Um, Alright, so we do have the option, but I think we decline because we just get to attack in here and it doesn't really matter, right? So they literally have to block this, which is going to kill this Turgrid, so that's phenomenal. Excellent. Um, the pack tactics, by the way, does not trigger unless we attack with the Werewolf Pack Leader, which is why I did not play it pre-combat. Uh, but now we can, and here we go. Uh, let's see what happens. Down to one card. What could it be? Uh, I mean... So far, this has gone really well, so... <laughs> oh, wow, I'm very glad that we uh, we did what we did. That's phenomenal. Uh, that's game. Easy game. Easy, easy game. This was great. Uh, a 10-10. <laughs> uh, yep, and there we go, guys. That was a nice, clean start to this one. I love that. That was fantastic. Let's jump into game two.
The brand new Reanimator Proxy Pack is now available through the end of July. If you'd like to pick up this month's amazing Proxy Pack, please visit patreon.com slash itresolves for details. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And again, a nice clean start in my opinion. We've got a little bit of removal. We do have the culling ritual, uh, but importantly, we can actually just lead here and go for, I think the shambling gas is gonna be the play. Next turn, of course, we do have the eye twitch and blood chief's thirst if we want it. So we'll, we'll kind of make a decision there. Let's first attack. I'll go ahead and play that eye twitch. And I think what we'll do is go ahead and play the pathway land. The important thing to remember here is that we do need double green and double black. So if we can get the green source now, we have the option next turn of either hitting the double black or the double green, depending on what we draw. So if we draw a pack leader, maybe we go for the green. Otherwise, we can, of course, go for the, the black. But uh, that really does help us out quite a bit. Uh, fantastic. Um, I think we freely attack in. Uh, if they want to block, great. I don't really care. Uh, the question is, do we pull the trigger on this now or do we wait? Um, and I actually think we wait given we have the culling ritual. Uh, culling ritual will be able to deal with the uh, hopeful initiate. I think we save that blood chief's thirst for a, a spell that we can't kill with the culling ritual. Uh, worth noting as well, we actually get quite a bonus after killing all of our stuff. So kind of works in our favor. This is again, just perfect because we actually do get to sweep the board. Uh, which we will probably do. Uh, let him hit us for sure. Okay, so. Uh, let's let's be smart. Let's just make sure we attack in first. <laughs> um, now the question is, do we culling ritual now? Uh, and I think we do pretty reasonably here. Uh, we get quite a bit of mana as well, so we can actually bring that back with the Balagid recovery. So let's give ourselves that treasure token. Um, I mean, <laughs> let's view the battlefield. So we have six, seven mana available right now. So yeah, I'm just gonna mascot exhibition. <laughs> uh, mascot exhibition on turn four. That seems pretty good. Uh, <laughs> all right, sick. We did it. Uh, that's a pretty reasonable turn four, in my opinion. Uh, turns out Culling Ritual is super good against a Boros aggro deck. Uh, so let's see what they're up to. They do have a Luminarch Aspirant, which is great, um, but it's not gonna do too much against us. Uh, in fact, I think we do just go ahead and kill it. <laughs> uh, we can be fairly aggressive now. Uh, because we've got so much kind of available to us. I'm gonna go ahead and put the Shambling Gas on the field and I am gonna hold on to the recovery. Keeping in mind, we don't actually need that much mana for this deck to work. Uh, we top out at four. Culling Ritual is our max mana spell. Most of our deck is three mana or less. So at this point, we're kind of in the camp of let's just deal as much damage as we can, save that card so we can pull back a Culling Ritual if we need to, and then we're in great shape. Uh, Really interesting that they actually attack in here. I'm just gonna take it. Uh, they lost, perfect. Guys, we're doing pretty well with this. We didn't get to see Sarah off that game, but we did in the first game. Let's see if we can do that again in game three. All right, guys, here we are for our third game, potentially our last game. Uh, how do we feel about this hand? I don't love it. Uh, if we had any green source, I would be much more inclined to keep it, uh, but I think we do kind of have to mulligan that one. Now this is much more reasonable. Uh, obviously we can kind of get uh, a little bit further into the game plan with this. We actually do have this that we can use uh, to, to get that treasure token for the culling ritual as well. So I think this is an easy keep. We probably throw the pack leader back and I think I'm realizing a trend here, which is that the pack leader, while a really good enabler for uh, card draw, isn't really at its best in a deck like this where we're really trying to keep the board clear anyway. So maybe that's something to consider if you happen to play with this deck, see what you think. Maybe try uh, something a little bit different. Really happy to see this actually because Culling Ritual should be quite good against that. Not against Hollowed Haunting. However, uh, that actually makes it a little bit easier. I am gonna go ahead and throw this out. Uh, as much as I'd love to keep it, given we are against the enchantments, Hollowed Haunting specifically, uh, I actually think it's better to go ahead and play it. It gives us our green source, which opens up the Orin Refuse for the next turn. Uh, and again, that should be really, really good for us. So uh, let's go ahead and do this. 
Um, I'm actually gonna throw it here. I know it's kind of silly, but uh, that's quite nice. All right. So depending on how this goes, obviously they can just drop the hollowed haunting, which it looks like they will. Uh, thankfully we can easily deal with that. So, uh, I guess the question is, do we need to deal with that or the naturalist? And I think it is just this. So let's go ahead and kill that. Fantastic. Uh, we get to attack in. That puts a three, uh, second counter there. They could block with the naturalist on the ooze if they would like. Uh, kind of curious to see if they do. They don't. They take it. That's bold. Um, all right, sick. Uh, a bit of a risk, by the way, going with the counter on the shambling gas. That was one thing I did want to mention because, for obvious reasons, uh, it's better on something that doesn't die to the culling ritual. Um, however, I'm very interested to see if we can make this uh, into something. Let's go ahead and grab that forest. Uh, we do get this, which is nice. Um, so we can basically clear their board if we'd like. Um, hmm. So the question is, do we want to go for the culling ritual or do we wait? Uh, because we can, of course, just go here and kind of go that route. I think we're just going to go this route. And I will attack with everything. Uh, let's get the ho that hollowed haunting out of there. We definitely don't want them to get that again. Uh, it looks like they're going to double block the hive. Interesting. Uh, very interesting. Okay, so we'll deal the damage there first. Get some damage in. Uh, I don't think we have to pull the trigger on the ritual quite yet. I think that's kind of the important piece here. Okay, they're going to take the ore and refuse. That's good. And the uh, shambling ghast. Very nice. Uh, well, now calling ritual is looking great. Uh, it does not, worthwhile noting, deal with either of these two, though. Uh, which is just something to mention because it is important. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and do this. That's fine. Uh, let's pull something back here because I do kind of think we have to. I'm just going to take this uh, because we can actually hit that borrowed time and just get both of our things back. Uh, which, you know, may not win us the game, but it's certainly a good a, a good thing to do. The calling ritual it seems at its worst now because they probably aren't going to get too much more uh, in their hand here. Now, again, could be entirely wrong there, but my assumption is that calling ritual was at its best last turn. Uh, so there's their little one one. Oh, very nice. <laughs> I do like that. I like that a lot. Um, perfect. So we are going to Binding of the Old Gods. And absolutely, we hit the Borrow time. Uh, just to get both of our things back. And now, even if they had a way to deal with this, we actually just have Binding of the Old Gods again. So I'm going to throw it on the, the Ooze, by the way. Uh, obviously, I think the Ooze is a stronger card in general, and if the Shambling Gas dies, it's really not the end of the world. Uh, and so, that's kind of fine. Good. I'm glad that it was a land. <laughs> um, touch the Spirit Realm. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Um, I hope they attack in, because I think we just block. And then they're left with basically nothing. Um, and we do have the Binding of the Old Gods to deal with that, so yeah, I think we just do this. Okay. Uh, sure. I mean, that's good. It's not the end of the world. I, I don't, I don't particularly care, uh, about that as much, so we'll just go ahead and take a treasure token. Land is not good. Um, we'd really like to get anything other than a land at this point, but, um... I think the play has to be to kill the Wandering Emperor, right? It's just a little too good to, to leave on the battlefield. It's also representing a lot of incremental growth where we might be able to pull just another threat off the top of the deck, and so I feel like that's more reasonable. That's terrible for us, obviously. <laughs> Deadly Dispute is not bad. Uh, because we do have a treasure token, we can actually kind of utilize that, so let's make sure we go ahead and do. Hopefully draw into some action. Valaged Recovery is quite good. Uh, so we can do this Culling Ritual and then 
yeah, I think we just do that. That's quite good. Uh, it's a nice little two for one. Um, it's not amazing, but it does kill the token plus the enchantment here. And we get um, the mana for an eye twitch. So basically they are living off the top of their deck and we have a little pinger. We're gonna Timmy him to death. Let's go. Uh, all right. Looks like they didn't necessarily, it could be that they have a, uh, hmm. That could be a lot of different things. So we'll, we'll see. Let's attack in. Let's see what they get first. It could be a Wandering Emperor, which is what I would be terrified of. I'm going to go ahead and activate the Abandoned Mire. Ooh, Seraph. Yeah, I think that's definitely the play. Let's go ahead and drop Seraph now. All right. Increasing the pressure. They did draw a land, and they now have a Borrowed Time. So, obviously, they're going to hit the Seraph here. Um, okay, Pack Leader's not bad. I'm just going to keep... I mean, the game plan's forward at this, straightforward at this point. We just keep going, right? Um, oh, we should have. Oh no, that's fine. Okay, excellent. So next turn we can activate the pack leader and attack in. Oh, glorious sunrise! What a great card, glorious sunrise! I absolutely love that card. Um, all right. Let's see what they do. Okay, just going to gain some life. That's fine. Land is not ideal, but we do get to draw a card. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll go ahead and attack in. This is where I feel like this is actually really important. Um, and binding is pretty good as well, actually. Let's drop this. Uh, the question is, what do we take here? Um, I think it's the borrowed time. We just need to finish the game, right? At this point, that's the main goal. This represents a lethal threat, uh, which I think is important enough that we can just kind of push forward with this. They do get to draw a card, which is good, but uh, it looks like it's just to land, so that's nice. Uh, they obviously just gain some life, I think is the only thing that really makes any sense. Um, they don't have a creature to draw, so this seems pretty reasonable. Excellent. Okay. Uh, no forest to hit. Let's go ahead and activate here. Let's go ahead and attack in with the lot. Let's see what we draw. Nice. <clears throat> All right, so while they don't necessarily have to block, they probably should, right? Interesting that they did that. I don't know, did that matter? Oh, trample, duh, of course. All right, um, and we're just gonna commit everything. I think at this point it doesn't matter. They're most likely not gonna have a sweeper, though, hey, they could easily doom scar and that would be terrible for us. We do have eye twitch though. And there we go, guys. That is an undefeated run with a deck that I honestly did not think was going to get a win. <laughs> so let's talk about this. All right. So undefeated run with Seraph midrange before people rage in the comment section, because I fully understand uh, your experience with the deck may be a different one. Um, we got very lucky in our matchups. That's just the reality of it. If we were to be up against a control deck, while we do have some elements to deal with that and and in part with things like Balagad Recovery that can bring stuff back, that that control element shell is not something that this deck is going to fight well against. It's a creature-based deck. Uh, the important thing to note is that we're trying to kill a bunch of permanents, and a control deck is really just a well-timed sweeper, and we're basically done. Uh, and so just keep that in mind if you find yourself up against a control deck and it probably doesn't go well. Don't be surprised, this is very well tooled out to deal with uh, enchantment lists, creature lists, things like that. It's better to beat the Boros decks, not the mono black control lists. Uh, now we did see it do okay against mono black in the beginning, but that was less of a control list and more of a discard list in my opinion, and it was creature based, and so we were able to deal with it. Uh, regardless, an absolute blast of a deck. I'm very surprised by this because again, I didn't expect it to do very well, uh, but we did okay. We got some lucky matchups, and we got a nice little undefeated run here, so I'm pretty happy with it. I am going to mark it as undefeated if that makes you mad. Oh well, don't care. Enjoyed it. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I'll see you tomorrow.